Solar heated air can heat a house. Let's build a hot air collector and see how it works. Hi, John Canavan. Well, it's uh, approaching the end of the heating season and we don't really need solar hot air collectors so much, but you might want to get ready for next year. Anyway, there's been a lot of discussion on the internet, especially by uh, Gary Reese and Scott Davis about solar hot air collectors, and uh, they've come up with some very unique designs, and I, I thought that I'd, I'd throw my two cents in in uh, a, another uh, method of building a solar hot air collector. So, uh, some people use uh, pop cans, uh, they've also used uh, aluminum soffits, aluminum screens, uh, and uh, also nylon screens. There's a number of ways that you can uh, change light into heat and then bring it into your living quarters. Um, anyway, uh, rather than using uh, metal heat transfer plates as the absorber, I thought I'd give it a try and use uh, polyester felt. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I, I use quite a bit in my MTT collectors. So I had this idea of, uh, in the same way that you use a screen uh, to blow air across the screen to pick up heat, I thought I'd use this polyester felt. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is build a frame for our collector. Now, I like to use uh, steel stud slots, and I think this is what Gary and Scott also uh, use quite a bit. And uh, it's pretty easy to work with. All you have to do is you just bend your steel stud slot. This is three and a half inch steel stud slot. And then you connect it uh, to a runner like this. Uh, and uh, from here you can pop rivet the flange and uh, make your frame. So we're going to go into the details of that. That's uh, simple enough. You can, you can do that. But once you have your... Alright, once your fame, frame is constructed, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to need some insulation. Now the nice thing about uh, this type of collector <coughs> is that we can use the insulation for the backing. You don't necessarily have to put plywood in the back. Uh, you just slide this, uh, you cut a sheet of insulation. Um, uh, now since we're going to be using uh, the uh, Sun Tough glazing, it measures 25 inches across, so uh, the uh, insulation will be uh, 25 inches. Actually, it's 26 inches, but when you cut the flange, oh, it's 25. Anyway, uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, so for the the bottom of our collector, we'll use this uh, isocyanurate insulation. You can see I have two uh, pieces of half-inch insulation, but you you'd probably use one-inch insulation. Okay, so that's the bottom section. Now we can hold that in place with another piece of insulation. Just uh, press that into the flange uh, like drilled. that. And this is the bottom uh, baffle uh, system. And the top we just have a straight... attach our polyester felt. We're going to be using the polyester felt instead of a metallic absorber plate. Uh, so it, it's sort of like uh, the idea of the screen. Uh, so we're going to be blowing air right through this. So I've already uh, secured this uh, to a uh, to wooden strips on either side. You can see I just uh, stapled it. No, no big deal. So notice the way I, I'm putting it in. I'm angling it so that uh, the angle it goes in towards the top and it's out at the bottom. So the idea is that we're going to be pumping air uh, from the bottom of the collector and it'll hit this, first it'll hit the bottom of this uh, 2 by 4 and then the air will be channeled out and under the uh, polyester felt. Uh, but since the pressure of the air is going to be greater on the bottom of the felt than on the top, the air will be forced to go to blow right through the felt. Okay? 
At least that's the idea. Huh. I don't know whether it'll work or not. No, it, I, I tried it. It does work. How well it works, I don't know. That's something else again. So, so once the polyester felt is in place, and I get the camera lined up, you can see that it's loose on this side. So when you staple it, you want to staple it so that uh, it will be tight when it's fastened to the side of the collector. Okay? I don't know if that makes sense, but... So, all uh, we'll be using to hold this in place is this two screws on the top here. Remember before I put these screws in under this flap you can see one screw over here and there's another one on this side. And then there's going to be two sides going through the side of the collector. Okay, we'll put this over here. So we have one screw on this side. And all these screws do is hold the um, the frame for the polyester Okay, if felt. you use sun tough glazing, you're going to have to find some way of uh, sealing off the indentations on the uh, on the glazing. So uh, you could use wiggle strips. That's probably the best thing to do. These side supports are actually made from steel stud slots. If you take a steel stud slot and, and rip it in half, you'll have these uh, angle irons. Or you can buy angle irons ready-made. Okay, thanks for your patience in watching this demonstration on the assembly of a hot air collector that uses polyester fill. Uh, remember, you can also use aluminum soffits, aluminum flashing, or uh, you could use aluminum screen, or you could even use a, a nylon screen as an absorber plate. There's many ways you can build a hot air collector. And this is used for home heating, but uh, you're going to need more than just one hot air collector to heat your house, believe me. Uh, but this is another alternative to solar heating, and this is the kind of thing you could do yourself. And once you get into it, I'm sure you're going to come up with some wonderful designs of your very own. So get started today! We should be able to estimate the efficiency of a hot air collector if we know the sunlight intensity, the surface area of the glazing, the flow rate of the fan, the weight of a cubic foot of air, the heat capacity of air, and the difference in temperature between the air entering and leaving the collector. Notice the temperature at the top of the heat storage chamber reaches 135 degrees Fahrenheit around 3.30 p.m. As soon as the fan comes on, the temperature of air from the collector drops and the temperature of the air returning to the collector rises. By 4 p.m., the temperature differential stabilizes at 22 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll use this temperature differential to estimate the heat harvest of the collector. Air weighs 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot and has a heat capacity of 0.24 BTUs per degree Fahrenheit. If the flow rate of the fan is 20 CFM and the differential in and out temperatures of the collector is 22 degrees Fahrenheit, what is the heat gain per hour? How will this heat gain change with sunlight intensity and time of day?